I want to talk to you about a new audio release I was involved in. It's called Tiny More Live. And it's from some recordings I made way back in 1980 of the great Tiny Moore. Now, I knew of Tiny Moore from Bob Wills and his Texas Playboys and from the work that he did in the 70s with Merle Haggard and the Strangers. He was kind of a legend in the Bay Area where I live now and lived then. He had a store in Sacramento. I had never met him. So I happened to be in 1978 at a fiddle contest up in Redding, California. And in those days, I used to enter the guitar contests that usually were part of these uh, big fiddle conventions and things. And I happened to win this, and I had played a song by David Grisman, one of his minor opuses. I don't remember what the number was. After, I, after it was over, an older guy came up to me and said, I'm up here with some old fiddlers, and boy, we really like that song you did. And, and uh, you know, uh, I'm here with Tiny Moore, and, and, and he really liked it too. I said, Tiny Moore is here? And he said, yeah, you want to meet him? I said, yeah. And so he brought Tiny over. And Tiny was not Tiny. Tiny was a big guy. And I said, oh, Mr. Moore, I'm so happy to meet you. It's just so wonderful. You know, I've heard you on all these records. And he was very nice and very humble. And um, he, he congratulated me on the win. And I just, you know, wanted to learn more about him. And I said, um, uh, you know, could I come and interview you for Mandolin World News? And I remember he kind of laughed and said, you want to what? I said, oh, I'd like to interview you. He said, and for what? I said, for this magazine, Mandolin World News. I should tell you, I had nothing to do with the magazine. I was not associated in any way. But I thought, well, here I am. Here's my chance. And Tiny said, well, sure. Come on up to my store. Gave me his card. Give me a call and we'll set it up. And uh, after he left, I was, I was just sort of, you know, kind of bowled over the fact that I'd met this wonderful, famous musician. And then the thought creeped into my mind that maybe I sh shouldn't have done that since I don't have any official capacity with the magazine. I hope I didn't get myself in trouble. So next morning, after I'd gotten home from this fiddle contest in Reading, I called my friend Daryl Anger and I said, Daryl, I, I hope I didn't do anything I shouldn't have done, but I, and I told him that I'd tried to set up this interview with Tiny Moore. And Daryl paused on the phone and said, oh man, that's great, can I come along? And so everything was okay. We went up and interviewed Tiny. Uh, the interview was published in Mandolin World News. And um, I, I just learned so much doing this interview. I kept in touch with Tiny, I'd call him up from time to time, and he would tell me where he was playing in the Bay Area and I'd go along and see him. Uh, he usually played with a band that was more country oriented or maybe with a little western swing thrown in um this that and the other thing uh and and i saw him with merle haggard also uh, and um, he introduced me to johnny gimble and eldon shamblin a bunch of the people in the band and he was just so supportive and so nice i happened to hear about this gig in 1980 in december at larry blake's uh, which is a bar in berkeley california and Tiny was going to play with a, a band made up of local modern jazz musicians, not, not country at all. And this sounded really interesting because I'd get to hear him play a lot of standards and things that I'd never heard him play live. And uh, also at the same time, I just bought this used Akai four-track reel-to-reel tape recorder. In those days, uh, there were just starting to be multi-track recorders that consumers, as opposed to studios could buy and a friend of mine was selling it and I bought it and I got to thinking it'd be great a great exercise to record a, a live band and maybe Tiny would you know let me do it I'll give him copies of it. if he wanted to do something with it that'd be great so I called up Tiny and again he kind of laughed as though why would you want to do that uh, and he said but but sure come on down the date got closer and I I asked my friend John Gonder, who was a um, mandolin student of Tiny Moore's, and John was really excited about it because, again, he would get to hear Tiny playing this material that we never really got to hear him play live. So Don, John helped me drag down mic stands and chords and, and that this Akai machine weighed a ton, not literally. Um, we had a little mixer and all this stuff, set the stuff up, 
and recorded the show as it progressed. And it was really hard to concentrate on the recording because the music was so great. Tiny played his five string electric Bigsby mandolin and he played the fiddle and he switched off between them and the piano player and the bass player and the drummer all took solos. On piano, Dick Whittington, Rob Fisher was on bass, and Vince Latiano was on drums. And these were pretty well-known Bay Area modern jazz players. Um, you, you'd read about them every week playing at this club or with this traveling musician, stuff like that. So it was just top-notch stuff. All off the cuff, they didn't rehearse. Tiny just, you can hear him in the background, you know, George on my mind, an F okay, here we go. One, two, and away they'd go. It's some incredible music, and I want to give you some samples of it. Here's one called Indiana. And that was Indiana by Tiny Moore and the band. And you can just hear the energy of it. It just it was coming together on the spur of the moment. It was great playing. And I want to give you a, another one too. This is one called It Had to Be You. And uh, they recorded in addition to these up-tempo, I shouldn't say recorded, they were just playing. But they played in addition to up kind of up-tempo uh, songs, they played some ballads. And this is a really pretty treatment of it had to be you. Here's one called The Birth of the Blues, Tiny Moore Live at Larry Blake's.
Here's Tiny Moore and the band playing that classic St. Louis Blues. Here's one more, the ever popular classic, Sweet Georgia Brown. Well, I hope you enjoyed hearing those snippets of what's on Tiny More Live. I'll put the URL on the screen, and this is for Acoustic Disc, David Grisman's record company. You can go right there and get all the information about it. I'll also put it in the introduction to this video. And I hope you'll check out Tiny More Live, Larry Blake's 12-20-1980. So long.